The world is transforming, and after it, the only thing that will be left will be EV, at least in the car industry. We are trying our best to replace ICE with EVs, so how will it happen, and what is the problem that's there? If global automakers' activities are any indication, the internal combustion engine or ICE, which has powered autos for more than a century, may become outdated in a few decades. However, due to more rigorous government emissions restrictions, lowering costs, and increasingly favorable public attitude toward a growing array of EV options, and a societal reckoning about climate change, the shift to electric vehicles or EV is now quickening on a global scale. California said back in 2020 that it would phase out the sale of new gasoline-powered cars by 2035 in favor of zero-emission electric vehicles. The rest of the globe is far ahead, with at least 15 nations including France, the United Kingdom, Netherlands and Belgium having already banned new gasoline automobiles and others enacting tough rules to hasten EV adoption between 2030 and 2035. Europe and China have realized that the combustion engine is dead, says Arndt Ellinghorst, a Bernstein research automotive expert. Now it appears that the United States is waking up. According to consulting firm Alex Partners, automakers are already jockeying for positions, investing $200 billion in EV technology over the next five years. Despite the fact that some new manufacturing EVs were delayed in 2020 due to the coronavirus epidemic, all of these EVs were mostly launched by the end of 2021. The Ford Mustang E and Rivian R1T, as well as Tesla Model Y, are among them. Meanwhile, GM is committed to producing 20 new electric vehicles by 2023, including Chevrolet, Cadillac, GMC, and Buick models. Models such as the Audi e-tron, BMW i4 and iX3, Polestar 2, Volvo XC40 Recharge, Porsche Taycan and Macan EV, and Mini Cooper SE are among the Europeans' offerings. The Honda e, Nissan Ariya SUV, Toyota Mirai fuel cell car, and Mazda's MX-30, the company's first electric SUV, were also on display. EV sales surpassed 2.1 million worldwide in 2019, an increase of 40% year over year. In 2019, electric automobiles accounted for around 1% of the worldwide automotive stock and 2.6% of global car sales. We have to realistically believe that around 2035, there will be a serious discussion about banning the internal combustion engine in not just in California. Volvo Car CEO Hakan Samuelson says, Climate change is here to stay, and reducing carbon dioxide emissions from cars and trucks is crucial to reducing carbon dioxide emissions. By investing in walkable communities instead of suburban motorways and utilizing electric technology, urban planners hope to reorganize cities around people rather than automobiles. In January of this year, Toyota revealed plans to develop Woven City, a prototype city near Mount Fuji powered by hydrogen fuel cells and serviced by electric vehicles, robotics, and drones. Porsche, on the other hand, is developing new modes of transportation that will focus on electric cars and sophisticated traffic guiding systems to minimize urban traffic congestion. Electric vehicles account for less than 2% of all cars in the United States and only 6% in California. Even if every other state followed California's lead by 2035, it would be decades before all gasoline vehicles were no longer on the road in the United States. According to one expert, electric vehicles will account for 58% of new car sales worldwide by 2040, but only 31% of all vehicles on the road. Nonetheless, investors are enthused. Even companies that haven't yet manufactured any electric vehicles have seen their stock prices surge. SPI Energy, for example, had its stock soar by as much as 4,000% after the company announced it was joining the electric vehicle sector. Even with the multi-billion dollar investment in shifting public acceptance of EVs, there are still significant obstacles to overcome before EVs are inexpensive and comfortable for everyone. Some of these problems that the EV market has to deal with are The first problem is range. EVs run on battery and they will run out of juice sooner or later. But you can't just fill them up like a standard gas tank. Recharging a battery takes time, and even after that, they're not so suitable for long trips. Yes, they work great for daily use, but if you want to go on a long journey, then there is a high chance that you will take your ICE car instead of an EV. Companies like Tesla are constantly working on advancing their battery technology and making supercharging even more super. They will improve, but it'll still take a reasonable amount of time to charge an EV. But guess if an EV can go from 0 to 100% in just 15 minutes, then I think it's a justifiable deal. The next problem is that it's a costly transition. We all know that EVs are mostly expensive, and it's not that easy for an ordinary person to afford one. The transition is not something that'll bring something completely different. Even if you buy an EV, it'll still be a car with almost the same features if we exclude the autopilot feature that Tesla provides. 
So if the EV world is planning to replace the ICE cars, they have to release some easily affordable cars for everyone. Thankfully enough, Tesla is already working on it. They're planning to resale their $25,000 Tesla. It is still a long way down the road, but it's happening. The charging grid is also a practical issue here. As discussed, the following challenges are charging times and charge point availability. Even while DC's fast charging infrastructure has progressed significantly, even modern fast chargers with 350 kilowatt are still slow in comparison to 20,000 kilowatt from a conventional petrol pump. I just converted 10 gallons into KW. Nothing exciting, just boring math. A single 350 kilowatt charger necessitates a grid connection capable of powering around 70 houses. Even in the city, a connection to the distribution network costs around $75 per kilowatt per year, equating to $86 per MWH at a 10% utilization factor. This cost would be several times greater in a remote area due to the necessity for substantial modifications to long transmission and distribution lines. Another cost multiplier could be added if utilization factors are significantly lower. A big problem indeed. Well, if the whole world gets converted into sustainable energy, then this might not be that big of an issue, but for now it is. The next big thing is the material required to make the car, or mainly the battery. This is an essential thing as the battery that's used in the vehicle is mostly lithium ion, and it's not easy to make. I won't go into science too much as explaining how the battery is made and how it functions is a different topic altogether. Also, battery making is a process that generates a lot of waste, and if there's one thing that's slightly wrong in the making of the battery, then the whole battery can explode and burst into flames. And we also have a limited amount of cobalt supply. Cobalt is an essential element that plays a significant role in the making of the battery. But thankfully, companies like Tesla, BYD, and Panasonic are already working on it. We have the 4680 battery and the Blade battery. These batteries are the start and they could change the future of EVs. The last problem that I would like to consider is the competition with economic upliftment. This would not have been a problem if the world had been developed but 80% of the world is under development. For example, EVs with big battery packs are capital-intensive technologies that compete with all of the infrastructure required for economic growth. A discount rate of 12 to 16% must be implemented to appropriately reflect this rivalry in a rapidly decarbonizing world, dramatically increasing the levelized capital cost of all technologies. This is a problem that can only be solved with time. There will be a time in the future when the EV industry will rule over ice. But for now, if the EV business intends to eliminate the ice industry, it must move quickly to achieve these objectives. If I said they weren't working on these issues, I'd be lying. I also told you how the industry is attempting to fix each problem, so they're aware of the issue and are working to resolve it. In comparison to the ice sector, the EV industry is still young, although it has developed rapidly in recent years and continues to do so they'll be able to replace the ice sector in the future years if they play their cards correctly. By 2030, we should be looking at something new. You're looking at